Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today we are talking about short books and novellas. Uh, so I have five novellas that I want to recommend to you. This is also very exciting for me because this is the first actual like recommendation video that I'm making. Uh, this has been a goal for me for a long time to make an actual recommendation video <laughs> um, because I obviously like talk about and review books a lot but I don't necessarily like directly recommend them but that's what we're doing today because there are some novellas that I really love. A lot of times I think of myself more as a long book kind of person. I love a good chunky fantasy book but I also really enjoy a good short book, a good novella, uh, and sometimes you know you just come across a great short book that is able to capture you in just such a short number of pages. Uh, so I have five to talk to you about today. So let's just get started. First book we're going to talk about is The Forest God by Jamie Lackey. And this book is under 100 pages. I am not sure at what point something becomes a short story instead of a novella, but we're counting it because I read this earlier this year and absolutely loved it. This is a little forest fantasy where we're following three characters. One is an apprentice witch who lives out in the forest, one is a young lord, and one is the forest god. So in this world, the god of the forest is continually reborn into the body of a woodland creature, and this time around he has been born into the body of a hare. Uh, and the uh, lord and apprentice witch stumble across this hare and he is injured and they take him in and take care of him and find out that there are some things going on in the forest and its connection to its god uh, that have been going wrong and they need to set things right for the forest. I'm not going to go much more into it because it's very very short uh, but this is just a really delightful little forest fantasy, so if you want something that is just like fun, has some forest vibes, this is a really fun like quick forest fantasy. Uh, the next novella I want to recommend is actually a totally different genre because this one is actually a contemporary romance, which is Coffee Boy by Austin Chant. So this is following Kieran, who is a trans guy who I think has recently graduated college and is at his first internship on a political campaign, uh, where he meets Seth, who is the campaign strategist. And Seth seems very cold and judgmental and standoffish at first, but eventually the two of them get to know each other. Uh, and of course, a romance ensues. Uh, and I just had so much fun with this. Very often I don't really like uh, novella, like romance novellas because they move the relationship so quickly, but Austin Chant just did such a great job developing these characters, their dynamic, their relationship in such a short amount of pages uh, that I was totally invested. I just loved both of these characters. Seth in particular is a type of uh, love interest that I just really like who seems very like you know reserved and austere at first but then like when they like somebody they get very awkward and just like don't know what to do with themselves it's just it's a trope that I love uh, but I also just really liked Kieran's character I loved them both they were great and it was just such a fun romance so if you want something that is just like a really quick fun romance highly recommend this one was delightful all right, the next novella that I want to recommend uh, was one of my favorite books last year. So I talked about it quite a bit last year, uh, which is Mem by Bethany C. Morrow. This is set in a alternate history 1920s Montreal, uh, where they have created a technology that can remove memories from people's minds. And when they do that, it creates what's called a mem, which is essentially a duplicate of the person that that memory was removed from, except that mem can't create new memories. It can only live that one memory on loop. And so they're kept in what is called the vault because they can't really like do anything else. Uh, the main character that we're following this, however, is a mem 
but she is the only mem who is cre able to create her own new memories. Uh, so for the last few years, she has been living out in the world, living a relatively normal life with a little bit of supervision from the scientists from the vault. Uh, but at the beginning of the book, she is recalled back to the vault. And so she is trying to figure out why she has been recalled but also a lot of the book is about her figuring out uh, who she is and kind of dealing with her identity because what does it mean for her to be like a living manifestation of somebody else's memory and what does that mean for her own personhood. Um, but we also get to explore other characters and why they why people might make this decision to have memories removed uh and you know what the consequences for that are and i think it looks at both like reasons why people would do this but also you know what kind of impact that has and it just is like such an interesting book i absolutely loved this i think again she does a really great job of building character in such a short book uh but I also think it brings up a lot of really interesting themes and questions about memory because it is very much about how our memories are a part of us and form us and you know create who we are and how we mature um, but also there are memories that can harm us and it just is such an interesting book I think that it's it's very short but it really packs a punch and I just recommend it to so many people <laughs> I think it's really excellent. Next up, we have another book that I have read, that I read earlier this year, which is part of a whole series, which is The Black Tides of Heaven by Neon Yang. So actually the whole Tensorate series by Neon Yang. Uh, this is a silk punk fantasy. So it's set in this Asian inspired fantasy world uh, where they are ruled by the protector. They live in the protectorate. And they have a type of magic called the slack, and people who use the slack are called tensors. However, the slack is very much uh, confined to the upper classes and nobility. So in this world, there is a rebellion brewing called the mechanists, who are creating technology and weaponry so that they can fight against the people who have the magic. In the series, in the first book, we're following uh, two siblings. In this world, uh, people don't confirm their gender until they are much older, maybe in their like, uh, you know, teen to young adulthood is when they will confirm their gender. So we're following these two siblings from about six years old till they're about like 35 or something in this first book. Um, and they are two children of the protector who have been promised to a monastery for like political reasons and they both are able to use the slack and so we're following the two of them throughout their lives from a very young age through their adulthood as they are you know making choices about what kind of people they want to be and learning more about the world. So there are some very large time jumps in this first book because it's a very short book that has to cover quite a few years. Um, but each book in this series is just very different from the last. The second book takes place over a very short period of time and really deals a lot with grief. The third book uh, is told in more of like an epistolary format through documents and letters uh, by a totally different character. And then the final book is more of a um, kind of looking back at your life, kind of retrospective storytelling. Uh, and each book is following a different character. I do have a full uh, series review for this, which I'll link in the description. I actually also have a full review for Mem, so I'll put that in the description also. But this series is just so interesting. It's very unlike anything else that I have read. I think the world is really interesting. I really love Neon Yang's writing. I think they do a great job of like pulling you into the characters and their relationships and especially establishing like familial relationships so well. It's just such an interesting series that 
I know it may not be for everyone, but I thought it was really cool and I loved it. All right, and then the last one that I wanna tell you about is another series. This is an ongoing series, uh, which is the Penrick and Desdemona series by Lois McMaster Bujold. So this is a bind up of three of the novellas. Uh, the first one is, I believe, called Penrick's Demon. And this is a fantasy series where we were following Penrick, uh, who starts out as like the younger son of some nobleman. He's traveling somewhere. He doesn't really know what he's going to be doing with his life because he's not, he's not going to inherit. He's traveling at the time when he comes across a older woman who is dying and he stops to try and help her. And when she dies, uh, he finds out that she was possessed by a demon and that demon jumps to him uh, and decides to reside in his body now. And in this world, the way their magic works is that you get, most often you get magic through a chaos demon. They have a whole like uh, system of gods where they have five gods and the way that you get magic is by having like a chaos demon that lives in your body with you, uh, which can be very dangerous, except that Penric doesn't really know this. And so he decides to name and befriend his demon. He names it Desdemona and they become buddies. Um, and now he has to go and become a temple sorcerer. He ends up really loving his theological work. He's very scholarly and very unassuming and his whole dynamic with Desdemona, his demon, is just very funny because she both has like kind of the individual personalities of all of her previous hosts because as a demon moves from one host to another it takes the memories and personalities of those previous hosts with them. So she has all of those personalities and up until this point Desdemona has always uh, been with women, and so there are like five like old women who now live in Penric's head and like give him advice and like lecture him about stuff. Uh, but she also has this kind of composite personality that is Desdemona. And the two of them are just so funny because he's like this very unassuming young guy who has like all these old ladies in his head like giving him advice about stuff. But then also they get into situations because he ends up having to go on missions for things. He has to go undercover sometimes. And Desdemona is always like, oh, we could kill this person because she's a chaos demon and that's the type of magic that she does. And he's like, how about not? Why don't I like dress up in a costume and a disguise and like hide from them and we'll just like evade them? And she's like, but we could kill them. And he's like, or we could just escape. And so their whole dynamic is just very funny. Um, I also really love that this series uh, gets very into the uh, fantasy religion of this world and kind of the theological questions of the world and their religious system and the gods and all of that. Um, I love a good fantasy religion. I wish more books had fantasy religions and like really got into those religions and like the theology of it and not just like, oh yeah, there's a god that exists. So I love that that's a part of this. So if you enjoy a fantasy religion, I feel like you would really like this and it just is like a really fun like cozy feel-good series with really likable fun characters. I really like the way that um, Lois McMaster Bujold writes her characters. I always describe them as being very sensible <laughs> which it just I don't know I just get a kick out of them. Also with this series I highly recommend the audiobooks. The narrator is excellent. I actually have read this entire series as audiobook um, so it's a great audiobook. All right so those are the five novellas that I wanted to recommend to you. Uh, I am now kind of specifically seeking out short books and novellas to read because I feel like recently I've really been enjoying them. So if you have any suggestions for short books or novellas, I would love to hear about them. Uh, but thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!